Well hello Internet and welcome to part 13 of my C video tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about how we can convert from base 10 to base 2, 8, and 16 and everything in between actually. And the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is because I've received requests to cover more on binary code. If you missed any of the previous parts of the tutorial I provide a link in the upper right hand corner. And this presentation is going to be about 50% presentation and about 50% code. So I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay, now with C we can actually work with individual bits and that is what is great about C. And as this tutorial progresses you're going to find out because we can work with individual bits this is going to make C very useful if we want to work directly with hardware. But first we have to really understand how binary numbers and hexadecimal numbers actually work. What we use for counting is known as base 10. And as you can see here, base 10 numbers are calculated by multiplying each successive number by an increasing multiple of 10. So if we have here 10 to the 0 power, that is going to be equal to 1, and that is going to say how many 1's do we need to create our final number. Also, we have 10 to the power of 1. That is going to ask how many 10's we need to create our final number. And if we take 40 plus 5, that's how we get 45. And also down here, 10 to the power of 2, that's going to say how many 100's we need to create our final number. Pretty easy because we are used to it. And here, just to reinforce that, I have 1,000 instead of 10 to the power of 3, 100 instead of 10 to the power of 2, 10 instead of 10 to the power of 1, and 1 instead of 10 to the power of 0. And that is how our number system works. Well, if you understand that, you should also understand how all of the other different numbering systems work. Now, because it is believed we use base 10 because we have 10 fingers, to understand computers, you must learn to understand the world as if a machine is standing there and it only has two fingers. Or you could think of it as a switch that has an on button or an off button. And that is in essence what we have. We can only use ones and zeros obviously in binary. Hence what we're saying to create our final number, how many ones do we need? Here we obviously need zero. Then we ask how many twos do we need? Here we need one. So if we take two plus zero, that means that one zero in binary is equal to two. Hence, if we take that out even further, here we have the ones, here we have the twos, and here we have the fours. So we're saying that we need one four plus one two plus one one. So if we take four plus two plus one, that equals seven. And hence, one 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 in binary is equal to seven in base 10. Now bytes, which is something we should get very comfortable with, are normally represented as 8 bits. And they of course can hold a maximum number of 255 because of how binary numbers work. And if you add 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, you're going to get to the number of 255. So you may ask yourself, how exactly does base 8 work? Well, pretty much exactly the same way. The only difference is, is we're going to use an 8 here instead of a 10 or a 2. Hence, if we have 45 as a base 8 number, how exactly does that translate into 37 for base 10? Well, in essence, what we're going to do is calculate 37 down here and figure out what that would look like if we display it as a base 8 number. So first let's start here and figure out how many 8's we need to get to 37. Well if we take 4 times 8 that is going to get us 32 and then if we want to finally get to 37 we just have to add 5 to it and that's exactly what we did. The same is going to be true if we want to get to 301 as a base number using base 8 numbers. We're going to say how many 64's do we need, multiply that times 4 to get 256, then how many 8's are we going to need, we're going to multiply that times 5 to get 40, and then we're going to add all these guys up and come out to a base 8 number of 455 in comparison to a base 10 number of 301. So then you may ask, well exactly how do hexadecimal numbers work out? Well since we want to keep this nice and simple, if you want to represent a 10 in hexadecimal since we're using 16 digits, 10 in hexadecimal is going to be replaced with the letter A, 11 with the letter B, 12 with the letter C, 13 with the letter D, 14 with the letter E, and 15 with the letter F. So you may ask yourself, well what about 16? This is often something that confuses people. 10 in hexadecimal code is going to be the same as 16 in base 10. 
So it's something that's very important to be able to grasp. And it's true in all number systems. So let's take a little bit closer look at exactly how base 16 works. It works exactly the same. Let's just jump down here. So we have how many ones, how many 16s, and how many 256s do we need to get a final number of 455? Then we go through and we decide we only need one 256, and then we have to figure out how many 16s we're gonna need. Well, we're gonna need 12, which is gonna work out to 192, and 12 in hexadecimal is going to be the same as the letter C. And then finally, we figure out how many ones we're gonna need to complete this calculation. So that brings us to how exactly are we going to be able to print out binaries. I'm going to start off just showing you or creating a function that is going to create binary numbers from base 10 numbers. So let's say that our base 10 number we're going to be using is 11. How exactly are we going to convert that into a string in binary code that we're going to be able to print out to the screen? What I decided to do is to create a character array. And at the end of that character array, we're going to put a null value. So this, in essence, is going to be a buffer. Well, there's a neat little way to convert to pretty much any type of base. And what we're going to use to do so is the modulus character. Now, if you take your original base 10 number and use the modulus character followed by the base that you want to convert into, it is going to provide you with the number that you're going to have to put down here. And in this situation, that number, if we're using binaries, is going to be either a 1 or a 0. So in essence, what we're asking here is, do I have an odd number inside of this number that I want to convert? Well, the answer to that would be yes. So what we're going to do is put the 1 down inside of here. Then, to continue moving on, we're going to take 11 and divide it by 2 to get the number 5. Move the 5 down here, modulus followed by the base, and that's going to also provide a 1. In essence, what we're asking is, do I need a 2? Well, the answer is yes, because this is a 1, so we're going to put the 1 down here. Then we continue our calculation. We're going to take the 5, divide it by 2, which is the base. Then we're going to take the 2, modulus with the base 2, and that's going to give us a 0. In essence, what we're asking is, do I need a 4? The answer in this situation is no. So we're going to take the 0 and put it down there. Then we're going to continue. And we're going to continue until this guy right here is equal to 0. So let's move on. Take the 2, divide by 2 is equal to 1. Move the 1 down here. Modulus, 2. So we're saying, do we need an 8 to finally convert the 11 into a binary number? The answer to that is yes. So we're going to move the 1 down here. Then if we do an additional calculation, we're going to get an error, and hence we are finished. So by going through this process, we know that the binary representation of the base 10 number 11 is actually 1011. And that is what I'm going to create inside of my code. So here we are, we're going to create our function, and it is going to return to us a character array that's going to have a binary number or whatever else we want to use inside of it. So what we're going to have to do is pass an unsigned int, and in the next part of the tutorial I'll get more into that and why we're using unsigned ints, but it's just something we're going to use specifically to keep things very simple. And then we're also going to accept our base. Now, whenever I first make this, I'm going to focus in on just converting from base 10 to binary. Then I'm going to show you how to convert from base 10 to pretty much anything up to base 16. So what did I do originally? Well, I created a buffer. And I said that I want to work with bytes. So that's going to be 32 bits. But I also want to have room for my null character. And that's exactly what I just created. Then I'm going to have to create this character array, and this is going to be the converted number that we're going to be using, and what finally is going to be passed back to the user. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, I know we're going to start off with binary, but I'm going to check to make sure that they're not trying to get me to convert to a base that is less than 2 or greater than 16. And if they do, I'm going to say printf, enter a number between 2 and 16. And then just to keep things nice and simple, I'm just going to exit out of the program if they do anything else and they'll have to restart. Okay, so there that is. Now what I need to do is point to the last index in our character array. And that is where I'm going to store the null character. So get our converted number here. And to point to the last part of our buffer, put the ampersand on top of that. And then I'm going to say size of the buffer minus one because we're using zero index from the beginning. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm pointing at the right position. Well, now what I want to do is actually set the value for that. 
And to do that, I'm going to throw the null character inside of that. And there we are. So a little brush up on pointers as well. Well then, I want to continue doing things over and over and over again, as you saw in the previous part of the tutorial, while this guy up here, number to convert, paste that down inside of there, is not equal to zero. And there we are. So what exactly am I going to do? Well, I'm going to get the value. And that value can be received by going number to convert, and then modulus by whatever the base is that they sent in, just like you saw previously. Then what I need to do after I get that is I need to move over to the left with our little array we're working with here. So converted number is equal to converted number minus one. And that's gonna move me to the left so that I can place my number in the right position. Then I need to store the proper value in the character array for the final converted number. So once again, put the star inside of there. And if I want to put an integer inside of this character array, one of the short ways to do that or shortcut ways to do that is to put this zero inside of there and add it to value. Then what I need to do is do exactly what I did before and divide my number to convert by whatever the base is. And of course, this number to convert, this whole entire thing right here is exactly the same as number to convert is equal to number to convert divided by two. So just another shortcut. Now that I have that done, and I got my number and my array all set up, let's say I want to come in here and go print F and print out the final finished array, which is going to be stored in P converted number, right like this. And then on top of that, we can go return and return it. All right, now that we have all of that set up, I can bounce down inside of here. And I'm going to create another unsigned int, and I'll just call it number one, and I'll give it a value of 60, which in binary is going to be exactly the same as 111100. There you go. Now I'm going to say printf d in base two is equal to, put number one inside of here, like that. And then I can say convert base and pass in number one. And I want to convert it to base two, just as I put it right there. And there's a little bit of a bug here. Just have to bounce up here, get rid of that, paste that in there. If I'll save that, then I also want to bounce down here and throw a new line inside of this. Bounce over here, compile, and execute. And here you can see 60 in base two is equal to 111100, just like we have right there. So that is how you convert from base 10 to base two. But how exactly are we going to be able to convert from base 10 to base eight and to hexadecimal? Well, actually you guys like homework. So what I'm gonna do is you can pause the video right now and go and try to figure out how to change convert base to figure that out. And in between then and now, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's actually very easy. Okay, now I'm back. I'm going to show you my solution to this. What I'm going to do is create a character array and I'm going to call it all values. And then inside of this guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all the potential values that could be stored to create all of the different bases we're going to need. So we're going to need a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then if we're going to get into the hexadecimal world, we're going to need an A, B, C, D, E, and F. And that's going to be stored inside of our array. Now, I actually only have to change one other line, and that one other line is gonna be this guy right down here. What I'm gonna be able to do is change this to all values, like that, leave the value inside of there, put this right here, and that is it. It's going to automatically, based off of how this formula is put together, it's going to automatically grab the right value out of here, and it's going to store it in my array. And let's go down here and check to see if I'm right. So I'm just gonna go and grab this guy, paste that in there, change this to base eight, change this to base eight, go down here, change this to base 16, and change this to base 16. Then if we bounce over here, compile this, and execute, you can see that it changed all of the base 10 number 60s to the proper binary, base eight, and hexadecimal values. So that is how you convert from base 10 to all of the other different bases and a whole bunch of other different things. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to work with bitwise operators. I'm gonna explain exactly what two's complement means. I'm gonna cover binary fractions and how they work and a whole bunch more. Please leave your questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.